Okay, figured I'd show because I haven't seen any videos about this, but it's a 2008 Chevy Avio 5, and it's in regards to, for one, where the oil pressure sensor is, and also where the oil pump is located, since even the manuals don't seem to be showing shit correctly. It's not in the front, like how the 2009s and newer, those ones have a whatever, an oil pump cooler system back behind here, you know, where the deal is. But anyhow, on the 2008, figured I'd show it just quick. Um, I've already been taking stuff apart, but so you obviously have to remove your timing system, the timing belt, you know, both your, your cams um, in order to get the back shield, which looks like this, because this, this has to be removed. This technically, you know, obviously sits here. And there was uh, three 10 millimeter bolts, if I remember right, and one 12 millimeter that was located down here for some weird reason. But you have to remove the cam sensor because that would also be in the way, which obviously goes there. So you remove your cam gears. You have to obviously remove your timing belt, um, the tensioner, and the timing pulley. And then if you look, once you have those, um, the timing tensioner, the cam, whatever you call them, deals, and the pulley, once you have, oh, and the engine mount, you gotta remove too. Once you have those and the bolts holding the actual timing back shield cover deal off, you technically are able to actually then remove this. And you do not need to remove the water pump, just so everybody knows, like if you've already replaced it. I mean, obviously, if you're this far in and you ha haven't replaced your timing belt, your pulleys, the tensioner, and the water pump, this would be obviously the time to do it. But if your water pump and all that is still good, you know, you do not actually have to remove that water pump in order to get this shield off. Everyone else keeps saying you do. I did not, I haven't lost any of my coolant. All I had to do was loosen my three bolts a little bit, use that specialty tool to then turn, you know, to release the tension off the timing belt, and I have not lost one drop of my coolant. So, after you have that down, then, oh, my lighting sucks ass. But, oh, and make sure, I just do it, make sure to have all your timing in line um, before you do any of this stuff. So, Anyhow, so we're back on the passenger side. Um, after you have that timing cover out, that's this, I've already removed it, but this just pulls off, but it doesn't just like pull off, at least not on mine, very easily. I had to sit and kind of, you know, pry all the way around for quite some time until it came loose, okay? So you actually do have to remove your crank, uh, whatever pulley. But here's the big part that I wanted to show. So right here, oh, if I had better lighting. Sorry, the last video cut off, I guess. But I was gonna show you. So you have to drop the oil pan. So you have all these little, I'm pretty sure those are the 10 millimeters. They go all the way around on, uh, if you can see, on both sides, okay? Then you have some bigger ones that are, uh, hold on, let me find, okay. I'm trying to get flashlight back here. So you have, if you can kind of see, right there. There's one and there is, see I can't remember if there was pretty sure there's another one hidden um, hidden basically up in oh god I can't basically if you're looking at the video um, if you can see where that bigger one is like god damn it if this thing would just hold okay so you have a bigger one um 
So you have that one. And I'm almost positive without getting underneath, I can't see again. But I believe that there's one right up here. In order to get to, there's either one up here or one hidden. Anyways, in order to really get access to that, you do need to remove this, which had a three-piece piece that you just slide off. You do need to remove that. You will never get to it otherwise. Okay. On that side of the oil pan, you've got a couple of the bigger ones. Yet again. And then, um, let's see if you can see. From basically where the, the pan connects up to, what would that be? Um, what was that? Transfer case or whatever the fuck you call it. On... From the driver's side, there's basically a bolt that comes this way. So don't forget about that. And then underneath on the pan, the very front, here, and there's another one pretty much the same location on this side. There's black little covers that you got to remove in order to get those two 10 bolt or 10 millimeter, um, yeah, bolts that are way up you got to use an extension to get to them but so this has to come out um, because inside of here there is the oil pickup line that is bolted it has it was one or two screws or bolts whatever and I believe they're 10 millimeter also that bolt up and actually connect to the oil pump but there's no way of bypassing as far as pulling this out without this out because of obviously those two bolts one or two whatever you would see it once you drop this down which I'll try to video it when I drop this down but I figured I'd show this real quick and oh when you're taking this out there's no reason to attempt to try to fight with your exhaust I say fuck it cut your your nuts off of them or like the actual nut and just put new nuts on there but you have there's obviously I removed the exhaust piece that goes from here to right there it's that first section from the mini cat down because obviously if you try to fight and get this out and leave this attached you can probably fight and get it out the problem is going to be when you go to put it back in uh, you cannot have any of the silicone that you got to use as far as your gasket maker that cannot get bumped anywhere and yeah the way that the gasket or the exhaust sits you will never clear this without bumping into shit and you're gonna just make yourself i mean this car these cars already suck ass already and are a nightmare to work with but there's no reason to even mess with attempting to try to get this in and out with the exhaust in the way just make your life a little bit easier since you're already dealing with a stupid piece of crap car just remove the stupid exhaust so it's out of your way in order to get this pump out of here. And if you have any of that stupid knocking noise like all the damn ABOs do, take my advice because I got conned into doing all this work. Like this is like my fourth time now having to do it because people didn't want to pay for the or you know pay for parts right away without guarantees of them for sure being a problem so if you have that stupid knocking sound take my advice automatically before you start this stupid job order yourself the valve cover gasket replace that whether new or not don't matter just it's not if you order everything online it's not worth the time to risk anything <coughs> excuse me so remove or order a valve cover gasket um, order new, uh, valve lifters or bucket lifters. They're not bad online. Just do all 16 of them. Don't care if yours are good or not. Just rule it out. Just order them because you're already going to have to do it. Order the brand new timing kit with the belt, the tensioner, all of that. So it's ruled out. Replace the cam seals, both the cam seals and the main seal here or whatever, crank seal, whatever the hell you want to call that, right? Uh, make sure to pick up black oil-resistant gasket maker. 
one of the, or, you know, bigger tubes because don't go with any so-called pre-made gasket for these because they actually aren't supposed to have pre-made gaskets. And you're just going to have leaking oil anyway. <laughs> so just give you a heads up. You want the oil resistant black or the ultra black like Permatex gasket maker. So pick your bo a bottle up of that. Have some gasoline on hand because when you pull this out, if you let this soak in gasoline, same with the oil pickup line that's going to be in there, it'll make your life so much easier for cleaning it. Um, then you could take brake cleaner, spray the hell out of out of uh, the pickup line because there's so much debris in there, like it's insane. I let it sit overnight and then I still kept spraying and spraying and spraying from both directions until I finally had it like actually clear. Get yourself automatically a new oil pressure sensor. Don't even risk it, just do it. Because if you go to replace this later, you're gonna lose some more oil. And order yourself a new oil pump. And make sure, because I've seen a lot of them do not come with the, the gasket for them. You do need the gasket, the pre-made gasket for the actual oil pump. So order yourself the oil pump and the gasket right off the bat. And just do all of this. Oh, and make sure to order or pick up the gasket for the front mini cat to the exhaust piece. And that second one, I don't know if you can tell. Hold on, where's the dam? Oh, I wish there was more light so you could see this better. Hold on, let's see if I can get this to... There we go. Order that gasket, that gasket, the black gasket here, um, your oil pump, your sensor, your both your cam seals, which come in the timing pa pack usually, the valve cover seal, and whatever else I said basically. But there you can see the different bolts there and there on the oil pan. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. Um, trying to think. But yeah, that's my advice. Just do it all. Who cares if you think it's bad or not? Because trust me, this is a nightmare to keep dealing with this. So just do it all at once, and you don't end up having to lose your oil. Because every time, when before you move this, obviously you need to drain your oil, which right there. If there's any evidence of that leaking, seeping anything, automatically order a new one so you don't have to deal with anything later. Oh, and order yourself a new oil filter, which is located underneath or over by the small cat or mini cat right there. Um, and five quarts of oil, too. 5W30 uh, for the 2008 is what they... They say it can only take. And yeah, order all the parts. Do it all at once because of how much time it actually takes, it's not worth the headache of constantly keep ripping everything back apart to get to the same area you're already at. Because you're talking about an oil pump, you can get the oil pump and the gasket for like 30 bucks, 35 bucks online. The timing kit with everything, maybe like, between 50 and 60 bucks. The sensor, about 20 bucks. Uh, oil, anywhere from like 10 to 20 bucks. Each one of the gaskets ranges from like four to seven dollars, depending on where you get them. The valve cover seal, you can get for between like 10 and 25 online. So you can get all your parts for about 100, 125 bucks, if that, give or take. But then you've got it all ruled out. Like literally everything. Oh. The lifters, the valve cover, or the valve lifters, or bucket lifters, whatever you call them. Um, those get for about all 16 of them. I want to say it was about 40 or 50 bucks, if that. So yeah, less than 200 bucks, in a sense, and you've ruled out every possibility of those stupid, that stupid knocking noise, the oil, you know, leaks, uh, overheating, all that kind of crap. You take care of it all at once. That's the way to go. But, yeah, 
It doesn't matter what the manual says because you're not gonna find the right directions. That is what the oil pump looks like. That's where it's located. That is the oil sensor. That's where it's located. Obviously, right back behind the crank. So I hope this helps somebody because it's been a fucking nightmare for me to have to deal with this shit. All right, thanks.